obviously sometimes the people here could be assholes and then the weather <laughs> and stuff. I'm next to one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Punch Drunk Podcast. I'm Paul Brooks, joined always by Michael, What's up? Joey, Let's go. and Mike Lane. What up? And as promised, in studio on the couch, joining us today is former All-Pro, five-time second-team All-Pro, seven-time Pro Bowler, and a former first-round draft pick to the New England Patriots, number 70, Logan Mankins. Welcome, Logan. Hey guys, thanks thank, for having me. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Holy shit, that's uh <laughs> yeah, read those off again yeah. real quick. <laughs> I mean, are you shitting me? <laughs> all pro, five time second team all pro, seven time pro bowler, and a first round draft pick, thirty second pick in the first round to the New England Patriots back in 05. Yeah, I had them full. I had them all fooled. <laughs> yeah, right. Holy shit. Uh, and we're going to get into a lot more um, on your uh, on your career uh, and the way and what you're doing now. But let me ask you, um, so you get, you come out of Fresno State. Did you play youth football like Pop Warner or American Youth or anything like that? Uh, yeah, we played, I played once when I was 10. Yeah. And then, so where I lived, we played 10 to 12 year olds and then 13, 14 year olds. And uh, after I was 10, I was going to have to play with the 13 and 14 year olds when I was 11 because I was too heavy. <laughs> and my mom didn't think that was a good idea. And I also thought I had other stuff I'd rather be doing than playing football at that time, like hunting, roping, all those. And that was in but, California, and, right? Yeah, out in the woods of California. So uh, between my mom's saying I'm not going to play and me being all right with it, I didn't play until high school again. Wow. wow. So then you, you play one year youth, then you go into high school. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you made the varsity when you were a freshman. No, not to no? the junior. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I wasn't that good, I guess. Uh, when I was a freshman, I was an O-lineman, D-lineman, <clears throat> sophomore O-lineman, D-lineman. And then my junior year, I was an O-lineman linebacker. And then my senior year, they moved me to tight end and linebacker. And then, How big were you when you went into high school? I'm not sure what. I mean, what, do you, what are you now, 6'5"? Six, 6'4". Six, so when I left high school, I was 6'4", 240. I was probably like six foot or 6'1", 180 or something yeah. as a freshman, probably. And then you went on to Fresno State. Yeah. And you played, uh, who'd you play with, David Carr? Wasn't he Yeah, my freshman year, he was the quarterback. I huh. was the left tackle. And you had a pretty damn good college career, too. Yeah, I was lucky. Uh, so I went to Fresno Pat Hill told me I was going to be a D lineman. I was like, all right. And uh, before I even stepped on the field, they moved me to O line, which was fine with me. I didn't know any better. So you were tackle there? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was lucky. So I wasn't recruited by anyone except for Fresno. And uh, my grades were so bad at high school, I couldn't, uh, not so bad, but I never took the SATs. I didn't take <laughs> enough classes to go to a no normal four year college. So my first year of college, all I was allowed to do was lift weights and go to school that was pretty good yeah there was eight of us in that program <clears throat> yeah. and we uh we weren't on scholarship but uh the coach told us it was like prop 48 or some bullshit like that but he said if you guys do good in the classroom and do good in the weight room you'll have a scholarship after the spring and we uh we all passed our classes and worked hard and we had a scholarship before we ever stepped on the field wow so you have a outstanding college career you go to the combine. There was one thing that I noticed in the combine, because to, to, well, statistically, I don't know if you had a, a great combine. It was good. Yeah, I was. But your fucking hand size measured eleven and a half or eleven and three eighths yeah. inches. I don't know if the camera does it justice. But I mean, they're pretty big. Hands. If you held your hand, up, those got to be the biggest <laughs> hands I've ever seen. <laughs> like you know when you go to I, mean, I don't know if you've been, ever been to uh, I think it's in New York. It's wild, and they have. Or no, it's well. The basketball hall of fame has them too. It yeah. has uh, like the Michael Jordan and oh, yeah. all the all the basketball players who have palm the ball and has their handprint in the ball. Mm -hmm. That might be bigger than yeah. any of those I've ever seen. Yeah, they are big. I was uh, <laughs> and and I have a buddy who plays uh, professionally in Europe, and one of the things he always said that he thought held him back a little bit was his. He's a wide receiver. He's 
you know, broke a lot of records at Stonehill. Went to went to a few camps, but he always said it was his hand size that. But he, he t he's been tearing it up for eight nine years in Europe, but to get to the next level, he just didn't have that hand size. That's what he thinks. Yeah, you know, I think right. it was maybe management or whatever. Well, I'm just, the only reason I mentioned the hands because I've seen you play. Uh, you used to get in a lot of scraps, <laughs> and getting hit with those hands, man, they must have hurt. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, so let's talk about when you get drafted out in the first round, thirty second pick in the first round. Yep. You show up to the Patriots. What was uh, what was Bill Belichick like then? Uh, so Hold on, before you answer that, to that <laughs> I have a question feeding off that. Uh, you stole my thunder there. That was one of my questions. But like you said, going to the Patriots in 2005, that's after the dynasty has already kind of happened. They've won three Super Bowls at that point. Yeah. So now, what was your thought like when you go, like, oh, shit, I'm going to the Patriots? Like, you have to perform. Right? I didn't even think about it really. Uh, there wasn't any pressure. So I was like a huge football fan when I was little. Yeah. Through high school, we would we would watch football all the time and uh, listen to it on the radio. Everything. Then when I got to college, I kind of just stopped watching football. And like I knew the Patriots won the Super Bowl in two thousand one. I remember watching that one. And then the next two, I didn't even know who won it and didn't even. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. but, all, I but, did. but coming from the West Coast, you probably were not a Patriots fan, though, were you? No, not at all. Yeah, yeah. no. I remember watching the 01 one, and then yeah. I got drafted to the Patriots, and you could have told me they lost the Super Bowl. I wouldn't, I wouldn't known, give a but, shit. Yeah. But it was awesome. That's hilarious. I was like, I knew they were a good team, and because going through the whole process of uh, getting ready for the draft, yeah. you, you knew about all the teams and uh, that they were good and had great players and. I didn't know much about Bill Belichick, but I learned a lot. <laughs> so you, so you get there now. I'm assuming you had some phone communication, at least, or some sort of communication with Belichick, maybe Mr. Kraft or somebody along the way, or was Pioli there? Who was the one that? Yeah, was Pioli team? was the. So, so leading up to that draft moment, you had to have been on the phone with them, right? Yeah. So the, even the day I got drafted, I answered the phone, and it was Scott Pioli, and then yeah. we talked, and then Bill got on for a few minutes, and then. That was it till I got here. So you get you arrive here, uh, and what was Belichick like then? And then, like, was he a like was he a dick then, or was he like? No, not the first day. Uh, he's <laughs> like, <laughs> not the first day. <laughs> he started day. off slow. <laughs> like, really, Bill's only a dick if you do dumb shit. Like, right. If if you do what you're supposed to, the way he wants you to do it, yeah, and don't fuck up, he he'll be the nicest guy in the world to you. But you do dumb shit and. Don't do it the right way and make mistakes. He the mental mistakes is what drives him crazy. Like he can handle the physical because everyone's gonna get get beat physically. But yeah, when you just do dumb shit mentally, it, which would drive me crazy too. My kids do dumb shit and it drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> I, I know, got, and I got two of them Jeez. with me. <laughs> you know this one. Um, but Bill was awesome and like uh, so he was a lot grumpier in my younger days. But as I got older. I think he mellowed out more and more as he gets older. Also, I think, but a lot of people do that. So it's kind of like my dad. Yeah, yeah. He got real nasty early, but I mean, he's. You, I I think I've heard you say before he's probably the best coach you've ever played for. Oh yeah, he's yeah. A, a workaholic, mm. uh, so detailed, and just leaves. Tries to find every advantage that we can get, and he will sit in that room all night and day watching over and over the same damn play. The next best. Coach, probably ought to ask you about is going in as a contributor this year in the Hall of Fame, Patriots Hall of Fame, Dante Scarnacchia. What's your thoughts on Dante? Uh, uh, nothing but good stuff. Dante's an un unbelievable coach, and uh, I was so lucky to play for him, and I owe a lot of my success to him. Yeah. Just the way he coached and the stuff he taught me and his uh, – how he demanded perfection. And he would say, we're never going to be perfect, but we're going to try to be perfect. And it was that way every day. There was never a day off where he didn't show up and demand the best out of you. So it made us all better players that played for him because he, he wouldn't let you slide one day. So he would just beat you until you <clears throat> played as hard as you could. I think we as fans noticed <clears throat> when he was there, <clears throat> noticed how good the offensive line was. Talent was one thing. But technique, play calling, you know, adjustments, all that stuff yeah. was was top of the game. 
And people at one time feared the offensive line of the New England Patriots. Oh, yeah. We were. And there were some changes. No then shit. he decided to retire, <laughs> you know, or, or step back a little bit. And the new guys come in. It wasn't that case anymore. It wasn't like that. And then some changes had to get made there. But he is um, he's well deserving of that, which we'll get oh, into yeah. later because I think coaches should also be more on the contributor side of a Hall of Fame, <clears throat> not straight fan selection. I'll oh, get yeah. into that later. But I wanted to ask you, through your playing career, you had 11 years in the NFL, which outdoes and outperforms most statistically careers for linemen. Mm -hmm. um, who's the biggest... Um, who's the toughest, toughest, physical, toughest player you ever played against? Well, it always goes down to the interior D lineman for me and those guys like uh, Sue and Domica Sue was a battle every game. Yeah. We were going to get his best shot. And he played the way I did. Like, it's after the whistle, we'll punch each other. In the pile, we'll punch each other. We'll yeah. I think we have a couple of clips of you. Step on uh, someone's foot or hand. We... You got him on the ground, you stick your forearm in their neck, and he played that way, so it was a battle. Uh, Richard Seymour was the same way. And the thing with Seymour is we practiced against each other for six years, five or six years, or maybe four. I, I don't remember, but it was a battle all the time at practice, so many freaking fights. I remember times Bill would make everyone stand there, and just me and Richard would be running while everyone was even in practice. <laughs> At the end of practice, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> because he wanted us to stop fighting, and we only fought because we both would test each other, and it's like poking the bear, and we're both bears that would come out fighting. So, <laughs> like it was always happening. And, but then I played against him, and uh, it was it was a freaking war that day, and he's like. He would grab your arm and like try to bend it backwards and break it and shit, and you'd have to punch him to get him to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so those two guys were like, and then they're both giant men that mm -hmm. are super, super strong, f like freaky strong, and then they have the attitude to go with it. And that's why they were both really good players for so long. Well, Richard just went in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. That tells you a lot. Deserving of that, too. And Zeus the now, Lion, right? I think so. Yeah. He just played for Which the Eagles, is, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is well, like 15 years old. <clears throat> when he's not suspended. Or, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he hasn't been any of those things in a long time, though. So the, the, what about linebackers? You know, you played against Ray Lewis? Yeah, Ray was a very good player. Uh, very instinctful. And you could tell he always did his homework because he, he, it seemed like he always knew where the ball was going. <clears throat> he had the defense lined up and... He was a very, very good player, and look how long he played for yeah. forever. They was he taking deer antler or something, but it worked. Yeah. <laughs> now with the Patriots, <clears throat> you um, I'm not going to ask you who the biggest asshole was on the team when you were playing there, but who was it on the team that you became like really close with, good friends, took you under their wing, and maybe it was a veteran that kind of helped you out along the way when you first showed up. Yeah, when I first got here, it was Matt Light. Uh, he was great. He he had had a he had a wife and kids, so he was settled down. And and when I came in, I wasn't married yet, but my future wife, we already had two kids together. So uh, they would have us over for uh, dinner a couple times. And Susie, she really helped uh, my wife at the beginning. And because we did move somewhere, it's easy for me. Yeah. I'm walking into a locker room with. 50 other guys to meet she's coming here doesn't know one person so right. it's a lot harder on the the wives than it is the guys but matt was great he uh learned a lot from matt as just being a good uh good person he's a great teammate uh like when i went to tampa when i first got here there was no o-lineman hazing like we didn't carry each other's uh shoulder pads how much shoulder kind of pads did, nothing uh, like we didn't make the uh the rookies like they had the rookie dinner once a year but we didn't make them go buy a shit. Like <laughs> we kind of thought it. Like uh, as I got older, I was like, "Why am I going to make this guy that's struggling to make the team on practice squad make right. sixty grand when I'm making three million? Why am I going to make him go buy me a sandwich?" Like so, we would the guys that are making more money, we would we would buy the sandwiches and stuff. And then when I got to Tampa, those douchebags are like trying to make the rookies do all this bullshit. I was like, "No, that's not how we do it." Anymore. Ain't gonna work that. That's, yeah. We're changing this so. It's because uh, you're a team. You want to be together, right? You want to fight for each other. It's 
when you're addicted to someone, it, they don't really like <clears> you that much. So you went through uh, some contract <laughs> negotiations a little bit tougher later in your career. Yeah. That uh, you sat out, I think, at one point. Yeah. Then they franchised you on the tag, still a little bit of an issue, and then all of a sudden they come up and they say, okay, we're going to trade you. Um, you didn't want to be traded, did you, or did you? At that no, time? no. no. Uh, but it's all part of the game. Uh, yeah, you, when you get to a certain level, you're going to have, and it, especially here, they, they try to uh, win in the negotiations all the time. Yeah. And the... I, I just wanted to be, I didn't need to be the highest paid guy, but I wasn't going to be like in right. the middle either. Right. Wouldn't well, be paid well, way I worse. Mean, I just, yeah. I read off the shit that you accomplished. I mean, yeah, why yeah. would you be the lowest paid? That's but not, I, that's not even a middling contract <clears throat> with resume. No. Yeah. So the biggest fight was over being tendered. I wasn't going to be tendered. Right. And I was, I was fine with being tendered, but then we're doing a new contract on top of that and. They just said, no, you're being tendered, and then maybe we'll do a contract off of it. So I said, all right, I'll be there in October or November then. Did you have an agent? or did you? Yeah. Yeah, all right. And then that was, uh, it was, so I got franchised right after that, and I was fine with being franchised. Shit, I was going to make more in one year than I did the previous six. So right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, that's fine. And then we got to training camp, and then they made me the highest paid guard. And I was like, why couldn't we just do this last year? Right. I didn't want to be the what, highest what paid changed, last year. <laughs> what changed at that point? I don't know. Um, so you played, you blocked, uh, many games for Tom Brady. Yeah. What, um, I mean, you can tell us, it's just us and maybe all our listeners and viewers. <laughs> all here. three of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, <laughs> what, uh, well, I know who gets the banana award. Yeah. <laughs> what was, what was Tom Brady like? Tom was awesome. Playing with and then off the field. Uh, what was he really like? He was great. Uh, Big to differ. Tom, playing with Tom was awesome. He was <laughs> Just a cool customer out there. He's never rattled. He would get mad sometimes and yell at the refs, or if we let him get hit too many times, he would get mad, but that's understandable. But he could make every throw. He's just a winner. Like, yeah. Well, you see how many games the freaking guys won. Uh, he's just, he was always prepared, always working hard, and you, he was a great teammate. If you asked him for a favor, he did it, and you figure the guy that played that long and, was getting pulled in all kinds of directions to do things that he would say no, but he would hardly ever say no. So before he started getting into his fucking avocado ice cream and all that, yeah, uh, <laughs> I heard that he used to drink beer. Yeah, and uh, was he, he chug. Was, was could he chug a beer like fast? That's oh like, yeah, go yeah. so fast. We uh, he didn't go out a lot after a while, which was hard for him to go anywhere anyway. But he. Uh, one time we got snowed in in Buffalo and we had to stay there and we went to the a bar and uh, that was the first time I saw him chug a beer and it was just like bam the beer is gone <laughs> and you wouldn't think it because he's over there eating yeah like avocado he's a and little bird or something yeah <laughs> avocados and he would yell at us for drinking Alfalfa coffee sprouts. and uh, <laughs> the what would we shoot we would shoot those uh, five hour energies right before the game and drinking coffee all morning. Uh, we never took care of ourselves or hydration wise or anything. And he's like the poster child for hydration. He loves it. And he would just would get so mad at us for doing that stuff, but we would make it through the game. So <laughs> but it really and does. We were sweating our balls off and half yeah. the time he was just standing there. <laughs> it really does go to show you like when you do that, the success, like, look at, look, I mean, he's the greatest of all time for a reason. And oh, that's yeah. what you got to take care of everybody for that reason. Like, Absolutely. And he had, he had but he a also, real long career. And, and there's nothing taken away, but when you took a lineman in practice, as Logan, you just said, you used to get in beefs all the time, even with Richard Seymour, it was all out. You know, quarterbacks are wearing the red shirt too. Yeah. So they're protected as well. You guys did every single day. You did it for 11 years. We're going to get into later on. I'm going to pass it around now. We'll have the guys ask some questions. And we got a couple other questions from some of our viewers. They didn't send them in. You have one. I have one. Okay, so but it has nothing to do with football. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Just ask it. It's about the farm. Nice. So, um, and then we'll get into what you're doing now. So, who wants to go next? You? Um, yeah. So, I'll, we'll go back to in college. When did you realize that? Like, because you said even in high school, 
the way you kind of just said it, you probably never thought any of this was going to even happen, right? No, no. Right. So, so you like, must have, in college, when you're like, oh, shit, I can actually get a scholarship. You got that. Yeah. When was the point where you realized, oh, shit, now maybe I can go to the NFL? Uh, probably after my sophomore year. Because even my freshman year was just like, or my redshirt freshman, whatever you want to call it. It was just like a blur. So we get to camp. Somehow I was doing things right and they were like all right you're the left tackle i was like okay and then we go uh i still remember my first game we played colorado and uh i got a false start in like the second series or something and then you're just <laughs> out there you're you're the only person moving and you everyone's like cheering and you look up and there's like i don't know what's that place hold like 60 or seventy thousand. <laughs> yep that was me <laughs> holy shit you finally realize what you're doing after you just were playing in front of 500 people the year, two years before you're like oh man but that year was such a blur because i had no idea what i was doing i was just surviving on athletic ability and uh good players around me so and then as you go you learn more and more and you get better and better but uh, i think after my sophomore year People started telling me that, so I started believing it, I guess. Because it is a different way, like, you know, I, I know, you know, Case from just from having him play with Joey, like, he, he played all all through yeah. growing up, and you really didn't, so it was a different kind of, you know, oh, yeah. upbringing with football when it comes to football. Like, leaving high school, Case is probably a thousand times better than I was. And that leads into my next question is, when did you start to realize? Because for me, I realized Case was a different type of player when he was playing Pop Warner with him. That, that kid was a man amongst boys. Yeah. And he even was in high school. So when did you realize, like, okay, he can go he can go play in college, like he can play Division One? Oh, uh, yeah, just watching him in high school. Once he finally, he's kind of a late bloomer, like uh, I would say physically. Uh, he's always been a bigger kid, but he was, the way he's built now is... <laughs> way different than he was mm -hmm. a few years ago he's freaking he's getting jacked right now i don't know he's yeah like, he went he went from junior year to senior year, a different yeah. person his, and he was he was absolutely i didn't cool. recognize him when i yeah. when i yeah. went to the first game he's got big arms now his shoulders are getting big he's always been big like his leg bones are like ginormous around and then he's got big ass legs so so you're saying he's better than you were at this point oh yeah a million times better uh we'll see where that leads to right He's just uh, like he's had a lot, a lot better coaching than I had at that stage too. Like, I would agree with that. Oh, yeah. Stop! I was gonna say you really gonna you really gonna feed into that. You gonna you gonna you gonna. Yeah. And Paul Paul yeah. coached him a lot, and then he, uh, I think, it's just, uh, the is just. Is that part of the reason you guys stayed in in this area? Is that because a lot of people. Oops. The area. I gotta cut that down. Oh, you can cut it out. Um, the area. The area. A lot of pitch players stay in this area. Um, well, it's a nice area and a nice part of the country. Uh, sometimes the weather sucks, but and sometimes the people suck, but that happens everywhere. <laughs> no, we stayed uh, because... Uh, so when I retired, my oldest, Kaylee, she was going into high school. She was a freshman, and we didn't want to make the kids move anywhere. So even when I went to Tampa car and the kids stayed here and i would just go for the season for those two years and after the season i would come back we just didn't want to make the kids have to even then that kind of sucks though when they were entrenched oh yeah that, that yeah that was blew. probably brutal that was why i read one of the main reasons i retired was i didn't want to be away from car and the kids anymore and we weren't going to make a move just for one more season so mm. yeah like physically i was fine just the mental wear of that and uh, mentally, I was just done with football, ready to do something else. It's funny as as a fan, you don't really think about like the family stuff that goes into you the no game idea. as well. Like mm -hmm. that's got to take a huge toll. Oh yeah. Uh, so it was great the first nine years. Everyone was here together, and as a football player, you get to spend a lot of time with your family. So what's the season? Four months, five months long. Uh, you they work on down. Sundays, Saturdays. If you're not traveling, you got almost the whole day off except for a few hours fridays you only work half a day wednesdays and thursdays are long days tuesdays an off day but most guys i would say 90 percent of the guys still go in and they'll watch film or do a little treatment no one a few guys take the whole day off but majority don't and then monday's like a half half day so you and then you have the whole off season where you lift weights and run for i don't know three four hours a day and the rest of the day you can 
be with your family. So it's actually a great schedule for that way. It's not like the baseball guys, they're on the road. 162 yeah. games a year. Or even stuff. hockey and basketball, they're on the road so damn much. That, that would be a lot tougher. When Except baseball, they got guaranteed contracts too. That's true. So Yeah, and they just stand. And $180 million or something like <laughs> some outrageous number. Yeah, and the baseball guys are doing it right. Yeah. But look at football now. These freaking quarterbacks are getting paid so much. Yeah. I think the NBA guys are doing it right. Well, they're getting insane contracts. You got to think of this, too. When you were playing, I, I mean, that was around the time when the training camp was still at Bryant, right? Uh, no, they stopped no, that they right when I got They in. stopped us. So we were going to camp before that, then, because we, we would go to the Bryant camp, me and you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think but even then, you the still had you still had two days, right? Oh yeah, my, yeah. Now you, they can't do that anymore, so uh, it's helping longevity. Training, camp is, training camps completely different, I bet. It's not even a training camp anymore. Right. Even the, by the end of my career, training camp was so easy. But my first few years, holy smokes, we would go double days. I think uh, what did we? It was my first or second year. We went fourteen straight days at double days, and it was just like holy shit. <laughs> All with pads, full pads. Oh, yeah. You're like, what did I get myself in the into? Morning. And the guys with 10, morning, 11 the seasons. The afternoon would be just uh, upper pads, shoulder pads. Mm -hmm. But as a lineman, there's no difference between full pads Still and half pads. It's yeah. yeah. Freaking full speed into each other. One of my last ones is best moment of your Patriots career and also – the worst moment. Now be careful when you say worst moment because we are sitting like you are sitting next to a Giants fan. Yeah. Next to, oh, to your oh, right. Yeah. So it is pretty gross. Now you tell me. You yeah, can, I mean, you can say whatever you want. You, you can say whatever you want to him. It's it's pretty first. disgusting, but um, <laughs> I don't know. The best moment is the hardest ones to pick. Uh, there was just like it's not winning a Super Bowl because I lost both Super Bowls I went to. So those are the two worst ones. Uh, those are easy to pick out. Like you lose right. that game, it's going to be the worst. So, but the best is there's so many good times, good guys I played with that I just enjoyed being around and uh, playing the game with. There was just like when you have a big play as a lineman, you're working with a guy and he comes over and knocks someone's head off, and you just look at each other and you start laughing and high five. And those were the times I I loved, or just the practical jokes we pull on each other in the locker room and. So many guys that were just truly good teammates that we still, like, I still talk to a lot of the linemen, and they were just a lot. I was lucky to play with a lot of good guys here. Yeah, you could even say, like, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but your highest, your best moment and your worst moment could be in that same season, that in that season that got ruined in the uh, Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. With some lucky plays from the Giants, but. Yeah. yeah that, Everybody gets lucky plays. Oh, true. Not like that. All those Super Bowls Not that like that. Actually, won. You There's gotta, some some crazy catches too. Oh yeah, and some. It, of Edelman's always, was all skill. Because it's Edelman's was all skill. Margin. It always comes down to those crazy plays. Yep. Edelman's was skill. The helmet catch was not skill. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Just that's fine. that was pretty lucky. It was pretty lucky. I'm going to say it was lucky, but yeah, I mean, it goes the other way. You we lose. Well, mm -hmm. I didn't play. But you want to just stay in order? Yeah, I was say, why are you saying we? I said, don't say we. You weren't on the Giants, dude. You want to stay in order, Mike? And you get you get questions. Um, honestly, you guys asked most of my questions. Yeah, I have a couple things. Um, so yeah, we kind of already heard what you said about like Tampa, the environment. But was there any other differences that you had from New England playing in New England and then? Going to Tampa and playing, <laughs> what were the big significant differences? Oh, yeah. So the first year I went to Tampa, I freaking uh, hated it. Like uh, a lot of the players there were just their cash and checks. They didn't really, uh, didn't really care if they won or lost. And they were just going through the motions. And when I was here, everyone was like here for a specific reason to win football games and to play as hard as they could and to do everything they could. To win and then you go there and everything's a freaking joke so that was really tough the first year uh but thankfully the gm and the head coach after that first year i was there it was their first year there too they shook hand like half the team they got rid of all those guys they were just dogs and they brought in guys that cared the second year and played played hard and the second year i think we improved like four or five wins and it was a lot funner like when everyone's doing what they're supposed to, it makes the life a lot better. And 
a lot better teammates. And then a lot of those guys stuck around and they were on the Super Bowl winning team a few years ago. I know two of the linemen that were rookies when I was there, they were still playing. Is that Donovan Smith? Yeah, Donovan and then Ali Marpet. So Ali Marpet was a college roommate and teammate of a family friend of ours. No kidding. Yep. Ali, very good guy. Uh, which is a great story with Ali. He was a Division uh, three football. Hobart player. or yeah. What, yeah, yeah. So he was a teammate and a roommate of a family friend of ours. Yeah, he was a he was an awesome kid. Well, he's not a kid now. He's in his thirties. But when I was thirty three, he was like twenty one, and we were playing him together. So. After. Yeah, and he, and he's hit, he had a he, I mean he's still playing. No, he retired. Retired. He, was he had a, he had a great career. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah, and one more question. So you said that uh, obviously sometimes the people here could be assholes, and then the weather. <laughs> I'm sitting next to one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so when Not wrong. living in uh, California and then moving up to New, uh, New England was what was like the cultural shock you had to face here. Oh yeah. Uh, so where I lived in California, it was a town of a couple thousand people and we were out in the, uh, the woods of the mountains and, uh, there'd be, you could go, there'd be houses, one house on like thousands and thousands of acres. So you could get lost out there. And then I come here and everything's like, when I first got here, I know North Attleboro is like a town, but when I first got here, this felt like a city to me. <laughs> I wasn't used to so many houses there all next to each other, but now I love it here. And, uh, it was a lot different, uh, a little slower paced where I lived. And then here is a pretty fast pace. Everyone's seems to be in a hurry all the time, but we love it here. Now we, uh, we're entrenched. Our, all my kids have been uh, raised here. Two of them were born here. So this is all they know. And going to college locally too. Yeah. Which is nice. Uh, Kaylee, she's about to graduate from Bentley and, uh, we're going to her softball game today in That's Connecticut. Great. And then case is going to be an hour away in URI, which is going to be easy to catch most of the games. Yep. So that'll be awesome, too. I can't wait to see some of those games. That'll be nice. So 2006, your season, AFC Championship game. <laughs> you score a touchdown. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you pounce on a Lawrence Maroney fumble? Yeah, that was just uh, all <clears throat> luck. Uh I think I remember I had a cut block on the nose tackle, and I cut him down, and then I got up to see what was going on. And uh, I'm just like, I think I was walking or jogging over there, and the ball goes flying in the end zone, and I happened to be right there. <laughs> now, in that same game, the Colts, Jeff Saturday, yeah, he did the same, the same thing. Same thing happened for him. And it was the first time in the NFL ever, the history of the NFL, the two offensive linemen scored a touchdown yeah. for their teams. Who would have thought that would ever happen? Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Imagine the return you get on that on DraftKings, huh? Now, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> Ask some of the... Uh, well, the one, the, the Colts, one, who, the one big Lions question players. I had is... Lions players, yeah. 2011 was an injury year for you that you never missed. First of all, you, 161 games started, 161 games played. Mm -hmm. All right, that's absolutely fucking amazing in the nfl but you play an entire season of 2011 with an acl tear which sidelines most everybody mm -hmm. and you is it am i correct in saying you didn't even know it was torn until you went for the other knee that had a torn mcl well, well yeah. how, how did that story but you're playing in the trenches the entire season yeah it's, it, it was funky it was that monday night in uh miami and uh some d lineman on a pass play from the other side, like went to hit Brady or something and missed. And he flew into my knee and I was like, I was on the ground and I was like, thankfully it was third down. And I think we, I don't know if we scored, but we had to kick a field goal. And thankfully they didn't rush on my side on field goal. Cause I was like, I can't move very well right now. <laughs> so I was just like standing in my stance. And then we went to the sideline. I, was, I told the trainer, I was like, this doesn't feel right. And I'd already torn my ACL in college, my junior year. So I was used, I tore that that day and I didn't know I tore it then either. Cause then we had to run after practice and I was yeah. like, this is killing me running right now. So then I told the trainers after practice and they felt it and they're like, holy shit. Yeah. We, we really think you have a torn ACL. I was like, I didn't even know what an ACL was at that time. <laughs> so then we had the MRI and sure enough I did. So then flash forward to the NFL, uh, 
So the trainer's feeling it. He's like, ah, you have a loose knee anyway. It's all right. I was like, oh, okay. So uh, as time went on, the the pain kind of went away that night. And then I went and the, played the rest of the game. It didn't feel right. So then uh, I just slept on it that night. And then the next day, it felt a little better. So then uh, they got me one of those big Don Joy metal braces. And the trainer was like, well, we'll go out there Wednesday, see how you feel. We put the brace on and it felt fine. So he's like, oh, you're fine then. It felt fine. Yeah. <laughs> so then we uh, we go through the season. But as the season went on, it got worse. I yeah. could tell something was wrong. Like I'd go in the weight room to squat and I stopped squatting. I didn't squat anymore for the rest of the year because it just didn't. You could feel it like pulling a little. And then the trainer's like, yeah, we'll we'll get it. Uh, uh, we'll, get, we'll take a look at it after the season. I'm like, all right. So... After the season, because they're like, we'll go in and see what's wrong with it. And then we did the MRI. They're like, they call me. They're like, uh, yeah, we know what's wrong. <laughs> you got a torn ACL. I was like, oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I really don't think there's any players in the league that would do that at in, in not today's now. game. Not in today's game. I really don't. No. Yeah. Maybe maybe some linemen. I will, I'm not going to say that not all linemen. That would be the only linemen. position. The possibly. only position, though. But the position you got to always get down a three point stance. Those are the toughest guys. Bend in your knees. You're making cuts. You're blocking down, blocking out. But that's pulling. my point. Those you're are the tough. Those you're are the toughest your, guys. You're putting your foot in the ground and holding a 300 pound guy. Yeah, the first game, pulling was the hardest thing because I would pull to the right and it was my right knee, and then I'd have to plant on my right foot to get in the hole, and that's when I first noticed uh, the most uncomfortable parts. But after a few more games, that didn't. I didn't even feel any of that anymore. It just kind of went away. And that's when it becomes a business and you didn't want to just take yourself out? No, well, I had just signed that giant contract. Yeah. And I was like, I'm getting, <clears throat> I always made fun of those guys that uh, would sign a big deal and then get hurt. And I'm like, this freaking guy signs this big ass contract. Now he's getting paid to do nothing. <laughs> and I was like, shit, I can't be one of those guys. <laughs> but I didn't know how, <laughs> shit. I, I didn't know, of those guys. I didn't know what the injury was. I might have had second thoughts if I knew what it was, but that's the best thing. If you don't know what it is, you just keep going. All right. So tomorrow's I, problem at that point, you know. Yeah, I yeah and I, I was like, looking back now, hindsight, like I probably would have kept playing because I just signed that big contract. It wasn't like I had to stay healthy to get a big contract the next year. So right. if yeah. I had, if I couldn't, if that would have taken a year or two off my career, that would have been all right. All right. I pulled the interesting statistic. <laughs> How many times have you been fined? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> because you played the game tough, <laughs> and every time you watch a game, you were either, you know, dick punching somebody or yeah. pushing them in the head. Maybe an occasional late hit. I think you already admitted to that. Yeah, I got fined at least <clears throat> five to ten times, probably. So an eleven-year career, <laughs> ten times. That's not bad. Because I started reading about. Was it ten? Uh, well, I have the the three that were probably the funniest, but. Oh, yeah, my dad used to get mad at me. He's like, if you want to just get fine and give your money away, why don't you just give it to me? And I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not intentionally and great trying guy. to get fined. I had the pleasure of meeting your dad this year. But I was year, like, so. dad, that's part of yeah. the player I am playing on that edge. Like, if I didn't play on that edge, I probably wouldn't be as good as I thought I was. Yeah, like, you had the nasty. If I'd have just People were around, afraid to play against you. That's what it was, too. So yeah, you had, no one liked it. Well, some guys liked it. The crazy guys, they thought it was a <laughs> challenge. Like my last year, I, I was playing against Aaron Donald, and uh, the freaking guy was going a million miles an hour. Animal. And then after the game, uh, the D, their D-line coach, he came up to me and was talking. He's like, I was like, damn. I was like, that. Uh, I didn't even realize who he was at that time because it was only his second year. Yeah. But he was still a freak then. I was like, that that young guy, man, he was going like a million miles an hour at the end of the game. He goes, yeah, he just wanted to be able to say he got a sack on you. And I was like, oh, shit. Made my life so hard today. Yeah. <laughs> just did so he, he could say he got he a, get a sack, sack on you? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> so I got lucky. I, I was probably holding him all day. <laughs> I think one of the big things <clears throat> that we're going to push for, certainly, and we're going to put the link up, is now you're at a point in your re retirement mode where you're eligible for the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Not just in Canton, Ohio, which you should be at someday, but now the Patriots Hall of Fame. You've been uh, uh, selected as a finalist, and 
I'm just going to say a few things, and and I know I I would never put you on the spot to talk a, about the other two, but I'm going to give you reasons why I think absolutely fans should be putting you in. First of all, I think it's a flawed system, anyways. Oh yeah, everybody. and I think it's I think this particular Hall of Fame is an absolute flawed system because when you're an offensive lineman, how often do you get your name announced during a game? And if you do, it's really for bad things, really. It's for yeah, holding, always, penalties, always shit bad, like yeah. that. When you go up against a defensive player, last year it was Will Fork. This year it's Vrabel. Those guys are going to get their names announced constantly mm-hmm. by making tackles, by the sheer position they play in. Uh, Bill Parcells is a coach. He's constantly giving press conferences, uh, post-game, pre-game, and all throughout the week. So his name's already out there. But I have a problem also with a with a coach being a true member and not a contributor wing. I think it just should be like Dante's going in yeah. this year. Um, so <clears throat> statistically, and this has nothing to do um, with Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel is a hell of a ball player. Yeah, I was a big fan of Vrabel. And he's deserving of it. But we're talking Patriots Hall of Fame. When you talk Patriots Fall Hall of Fame, you played nine seasons. Mike played, played eight seasons. You played more games than he did. Uh, You are an All-Pro, five-time second-team All-Pro, seven-time Pro Pro Bowl, 2010 All-Decade team, 2000s All-Patriots team, All-2010 team, Patriots fifth anniversary team, Patriots All-Dynasty team, and Professional Football Writers Association All-Rookie team. You also, in Patriots Wire, and ESPN, you rank number nine in the top 100 New England Patriots players to ever put the uniform on. Number nine. Wow. On the other side, again, Vrabel, he's deserving. Is it this time? I don't think so. Because uh, he is 2,000 member of the team, 50th anniversary in all dynasty. He ranks 37 in the Patriots all 100. Uh, he played in 142 games for the Patriots. You played 147. So, again, this is Patriots Hall of Fame. Yeah. And I don't want to hear anybody say, well, he won Super Bowls. Okay, fine. But Super Bowls are not the underlying reason why you go into a Patriots Hall of Fame. Shouldn't be even why you go into the regular Hall of Fame. Because if there is, the argument would be, well, John Morris, who's in the Patriots Hall of Fame, John Hanna, probably who I think is the best offensive lineman ever to play the game. Yep. He's in. And Bruce Armstrong. Did you take that from? As long, <laughs> yeah, if it's true. If it's John Hanna. Yeah. I'll say you're second. But John Hanna, Bruce Armstrong, John Morris, Leon Gray. Yeah. Now, yeah. I have an issue with Leon. These guys all made the Patriots Hall of Fame. There's no Super Bowls. Yeah. And they're in. Leon Gray played five seasons for the Patriots, and he's in. Cut the shit. I mean, something really, when you play a full season with an ACL tier, MCL tier, you've given everything to that organization. For them to just say, go out and let the fans vote, the fans don't know offensive linemen. True. Who's given everything to them. They, I, I actually read, I think you were telling me, Joey, that there was a comment made like, well, he didn't. He didn't play enough, or yeah, when someone's saying he didn't play as long as Rabel, did. he didn't play as long as Rabel. Huh? There's somebody who doesn't understand and read the stats, <laughs> and that's that's the miscommunication. Mm-hmm. And I think that when you leave it up there, that's why I think it's a flawed system. Now I just laid out statistically everything that should not only put you in the Patriots Hall of Fame, but eventually you're going to wear that gold jacket too. Possibly, I uh, I don't know. We'll see. And and I and I absolutely think you're deserving of it. Uh, based on all these statistics. So we're going to put a link up at the end of the podcast. Uh, we want the fans everywhere throughout to nice. vote. Can we vote twice? Because we've already all voted. So <laughs> I have no idea. I think you can, just use a different I think computer. I voted different. twice. I just refreshed it and it was there, so I just wrote it. Use like, delete, delete, like, yeah. Send it, out to, your, send it out yeah. to your friends. I mean, you've done great work for the community. Um, you've given absolutely your your body to the New England uh, franchise yeah, uh, and you deserve it. I appreciate it. You absolutely deserve to get in. Yeah, it would be, be a great honor. Uh, a lot of great players are in that, so it would be pretty cool to join them. So yeah. what are you doing now? Are you, uh, you're a farmer by yeah, nature, so I grew family? Up, and grew up that way and uh, 
when we decided to stay here, I told my wife uh, I wanted to buy some land so we could. I just planned on messing around, but uh, the more I'm there, the more I keep expanding and making yeah. it bigger. And we have we were raising beef cattle now, and we sell uh, a few of those every year. We sell uh, the meat part, so we sell by the half or by the whole, and uh, that's going pretty well. We have a lot of repeat customers now, so and we do firewood and we grow hay and uh, we cut the hay for our own cows and then we sell what we don't need so it's uh i've made it a lot more busier than i expected it to be <laughs> yeah because i'll be i'm there practically every day now but uh i love it so it, it's not some days really suck when you break shit and or you have to do a shitty job but most of the days i love doing it but you're pretty active also in the community um and you also you still play softball or well bowling i did and the, i was doing men's yeah. league softball but i stopped that because it was the sunday games i just didn't like the sunday evening games on sundays i like to have family dinner make yeah. all my kids mm. be at home good and we all eat together and i stopped i went to a few of the sunday evening games because i like to be in the backyard in the summer grilling and drinking a few beers and then I had to freaking go to a softball game right after dinner. I was like, nah, I'm done with this. Yeah. So the I values, like, it's important to have your, your yeah, family. You only have one family, right? That's and, absolutely right. And uh, I love being, I enjoy, like, I see you with your family all the yep. time. And uh, I really respect that. And I like, I love being around my kids and having them home. So we tried to spend a lot of time together. Well, you certainly have a great family. I, I, I know them. And, um, I think you're going to see some success. You are seeing success in all your kids. Um, and I look forward to seeing Case in college and see what he does. That should be fun. He plays nasty. Um, I still got to go see <clears throat> Joey fight. Yeah. Mm. I, st I told Case <clears throat> to let me know the next time so I could go with him. Uh, Joey was one of the f my favorite players that I ever coached because uh, I, what was that, 6th, 7th, and 8th? That was, mm -hmm. that was a fun team, and this guy was awesome. Wherever you put him. Thank he you. always made tackles. Uh, you never had to worry about someone breaking a tackle on him. If he got his hands on him, they were going down. And corner, we ma made you play linebacker, mm -hmm. fullback, running back. Uh, very coachable. Do whatever you tell him. Thank you. Appreciate it. it. He, he did a lot for being undersized. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah he was undersized. He's just a little guy. He, yeah. he was <laughs> tough as nails. Man. Yeah, I had the heart. And then, of course... Was that you broke your leg the yeah. very last game in eighth grade? It was horrible. It was, yeah, I almost fought even... a parent in the stands that that game. <laughs> yeah, you almost fought the announcer. Who yep, the announcer and the parents. They played. The, there goes my hero. While I was on the game. yeah, <laughs> I went right I up to, to that press box. I went what right that? up to that press yeah. press box. Hold on before you open that. All right, because this is one thing. <laughs> um, we got to find out. Now we talked about Tom Brady chugging. Mm-hmm. Gotta find out who. Could Hold on, do. I gotta go back to the farming question oh, though. Oh yeah. Because the question, yeah. yeah, yeah. My buddy's dad, Mark, he lives actually right down the street okay. from the farm. He wants to know. You said you do sell. Yeah. You don't sell. You don't sell like the cows itself, but you do sell the meat. Yeah. So I I I take it to the slaughterhouse and get it all processed for you, and then show up to your house with. It depends on if you get a half, you get like 150 to 200 pounds, and. You get a hole, you're getting like 300 to 400 pounds of meat. I think you just got a new customer then, because I think that's why he was asking. There you now, go. Yeah. There Can you I go, get Mark. A brisket from you? Just smoke well, up a brisket? Do, do a Draper Farms competition brisket? That would be a good idea. I have a couple in the A little front. collab? <laughs> Hell yeah. So this, what, by the way, what we did not mention was the entire episode is sponsored by Hogwash Barbecue. And, oh, really? And, and <clears throat> Mike is the uh, co-founder of Hogwash Barbecue. Right. And uh, probably the best barbecue in southeastern Mass. No kidding. Um, we'll be at Angle Tree Brewery tomorrow. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. So, uh, so absolutely give it a shot. But uh, we have to we have to chug a beer. Hold Will on. Stop holding on. I'm dying to drink this. What is wrong? I with need that? to know this. Though. <laughs> Interrupting. Are you an NFL fan? Uh, I get. Yeah, the, like, not <laughs> of a specific team, but uh, makes sense. So not. A I bias. root for people I know <laughs> and I like. So, like we were talking about Vrabel. He was one of my favorite teammates I ever played with. Uh, I root for his team. Right. Uh, when I'm wa watching, uh, so me and the me and the kids and uh, Cara will watch football. Like Monday night, I'll watch until I fall asleep. Uh, Sunday night football, we watch. 
And you're just if, a fan of the game, not a team. We'll watch the Patriots sometimes. If the weather's good, uh, sometimes we won't watch the game. We'll be outside. Right. Or if the kids have an event we have to go to. Uh, if the weather's shitty, we sit inside. And it's, it's, it's just funny you say that, though, because, like I said, my buddy who plays in Europe, He's not a fan of any specific team, in, even in the NFL. He just loves loves the game. Yeah. So I'd be like, yeah, I don't like any team, but I just like the game because he has some friends who are on on teams or and stuff like that. So he's just, he's just like, I like every team. It's a, yeah. I'm like, I never really understood that. But I thought you were going to say you were like sense. a Battlehawks fan. Are you a fan of the XFL? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> I, uh, oh, you got to get on the DC Defenders train. No. I played, uh, Shields up. Shields up. I haven't watched any yet. Uh but like when Tom went to Tampa, I always rooted for Tampa because right. I, I was a fan of Tom and I wanted him to do good. And uh, Tom Brady ruined my uh, football dreams. So <laughs> I love Tom Brady because of everything he did for New England. But he uh, he told me I was too small to play football when I met him when I was like seven years old. <laughs> that was wow. messed up. Yeah, I had a broken wrist, and he asked me what happened. I said <laughs> I said I broke it in football. I said you're too small to play football. Do you still talk to him? Uh, not. Not a, not really. Uh, so you didn't tell him you were coming on this podcast like this. The, probably the <laughs> no. best. You weren't. Did Tom to, forget where he came to from? Time him while you're text here. Me, text me. <laughs> you, you can you can text him right that. now if you want. Just say, listen, I'm on the Punch Drunk podcast. Yeah, tell him to get on. Yeah, and watch. He man. should get on this too. I mean, cut the. Shit. I can get some avocado ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the one last thing, my whole thing about uh, even Bill Parcells saying this because a lot of people said, "Oh, Parcells got to get in." He was four years. Maybe five years with the Patriots. Yeah, that's true. And he made one shitty comment to make me think he just quit the team anyway. So, yeah, he can turn the team around, but any coach can turn the team around. That doesn't mean you're Hall of Fame worthy. But he made a comment about, you know, oh, they want us to cook the meal. They should have let us shop yeah. and buy the groceries. Well, I got news for you, Coach Parcells. You weren't shopping with your money. You were shopping with daddy's money. That's true. And daddy yeah. has the right to say what type of bread you're going to buy. Yeah, he writes the check. You know, so yeah. cut the crap. Yes, he may go in as a contributor, but he also still shouldn't belong before even Belichick. Yeah. And that, that'll wait that time out. That's why it came down between, for me, it came down between you and Br Vrabel, but you absolutely should be in hands down. They leave it into a flawed system with the fans, so it's up to us now to get this out there and tag everybody and fans. Uh, just hit this. I, I gave you statistics. Go read for yourself. Look up what you've done. And then come back and say that Logan Mankins doesn't deserve it. Yeah. Well, that's the problem with fan voting. They know the fans aren't going to do the research and take the time. That's why they do. Oh, that's yeah. what the fans vote. It's just one click. And oh, who's name? Oh, we all. Everyone knows your name. They're Don't just get me happy wrong. that people, every, people interact with the vote. You are <laughs> one of the few linemen that everyone knows who you are. Yeah, and that's. Between the dumb, that's, that but I that's credit to you because people don't know who right. linemen are. Yeah. So you have to think. There's a reason people know who you are, and it's because of what you just l listed off. Well, the other thing is somebody like John Hanna. Everybody knew him because John Hanna didn't block for a Tom Brady, mm -hmm. like another superstar. Your years that you played, I mean, you had some serious talent, and Tom oh, yeah. Brady took the cake on all the, you know, the the uh, the notoriety. Mm -hmm. You know. So, anyways, uh, and I also look forward to the post reception party when you do go in because that's going to be yeah, that would be good. That'll be fun. I like the party. All right, so <laughs> I know a caterer. So we want to, yeah. we want to uh, barbecue. We, we want to uh, got to chug a beer. All right, all right. Who's going to do this faster? Probably not me. <laughs> Out of a can. Are you ready? You got to open it first. Him. Get in. I did. Out of a can, probably not me. Scoot over. Scoot I'm over. on yeah. zero Scoot sleep. Over. Hopefully, you were even in frame to start. <clears throat> You yeah, I don't leading. think I was. Well, right. Cheers. Hey, cheers. Hey guys, thanks for Logan, having me. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thanks on. for coming. <laughs> oh, it's so cold. It is cold. <laughs> oh, so cold at the end. Sounded so weird on the mic. Like, oh. I'll guarantee you, there's another inch left in Michael's. No. No. Nope. All right. That was so cold at the end, though. Yeah. Excellent. You got any shout outs quick? Uh, shout out to Logan. Honestly, thank you for coming on. Draper Farms. Uh, to Logan, thank you for coming on. It means a lot. Um, it's not often where I know you're a humble guy, but, um, you know, I'm 30 years old, so I grew up watching you. And, That's true. Huh? Um, Jeez, it made me feel old. <laughs> well, na now just like son, a lot when I tell when I tell people at work, that, like even you know when my brother was playing and who he's playing with, and like it's just shocking. Like, oh, you know those? Like, yeah, 
like it's it's not a big thing but it is a i don't think you you guys might realize it but right. you don't act like you do and um it really is a big deal to all of us, especially kids around my age who grew up, and that was like the best time of our lives watching football was seeing you guys out there. So yeah. appreciate it. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, shout out Draper Farms. How'd you come up with the name? Uh, real original. Street it's on, name? Uh, Draper Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I was like, it's the street name, dude. <laughs> I was like, I just was thinking that one day, and I was like, ah, shit, the farms are Draper, so we'll just call it Draper Farms. <laughs> well, there you go. And then it's kind of spreading down the road. We keep adding some land to it that's neighboring land, so keep making it a little bit bigger. Joey? Uh, not really much, but yeah, shout out to Logan. Thanks for coming on. Uh, the episode was great so far. It didn't looking really well, so thank you. Viewers, you're going to see the uh, link to the Patriot site to vote Logan Mankins in for this year's Hall of Fame. Uh, I want to thank Logan for coming on. Really appreciate your time spent, uh, and all the very best to you in the future. Thank you. Uh, best to your family, too. Uh, but thanks again for coming in. Folks, subscribe to our channel. Hit the like button. More importantly, now take that link and put this man in the Patriots Hall of Fame. All right? Until then, we're out, guys. Peace. Peace. Peace.